Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today we welcome Father Tom Hayes to celebrate Mass with us. Also, um, in addition to our regular collection, it's food, the food pantry collection is taken up this week, and the baskets to receive the food pantry collection are the ones furthest back on the altar platform. And as we sing, Alleluia, give the glory, found in your worship aid. <laughs> We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Celebrate today the call to uh, be responsible for one another and the quality of the life of our communities as we try to follow the Lord together. First reading from Ezekiel, he's challenged to uh, 
preach to his own people. And if he doesn't do his job and they get in trouble, then it's his fault. But if he does his job and they still get in trouble, it's not his fault. And so we all have responsibility to speak the truth, whether people want to hear it or not. And in the uh, gospel, Jesus gives in instruction on how to uh, resolve conflict within the community. And it's an incremental process. But again, the bottom line is we are responsible for the quality of the life of our communities. So let's ask the Lord's forgiveness as we gather. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. whom we are redeemed and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, 
you shall surely die and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother sins against you, go, tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, Take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established in the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. For men, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I mean, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which you are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> We're going through difficult times, as we are all well aware, whether you think about the environmental crises or the, the pandemic or the uh, struggle with institutionalized racism in our society. 
There are a lot of issues that uh, need our attention. And a lot of times, uh, people might be reticent to uh, raise some of those issues with friends or neighbors or co-workers. Because uh, when you point out those things or issues, not everybody is interested in listening to what you have to say. <laughs> And uh, that creates a dilemma because uh, remember last week, Jeremiah was lamenting that he had to, uh, he didn't ask for the job of speaking the word of the Lord. And every time he did, he got himself in trouble. People didn't want to hear what he had to say. And I think that's still true. People don't always want to hear what's right. But unfortunately, when when people don't speak up, silence can indicate almost a sense of uh, agreement, you know. And so uh, the readings today challenge us about speaking up and confronting that which is wrong, even when it's inconvenient. First reading from Ezekiel, he's... Uh, he's Considered the watchman. The watchman was the person who would stand on the uh, <clears throat> the wall of the, the of the wall of the, the wall city and uh, would be on the lookout for any trouble on the horizon. And if trouble was uh, imminent, he would sound the alarm, and those people that were outside the wall would get back in for safety. And he was uh, had a job of being like the watchman, the guard, the guardian. And uh, Ezekiel says, uh, you appointed me to that job for the community. And you instructed me to uh, speak your word. And when people aren't responding to, uh, not to give up, but to continue to preach what's right. And if people persist in their evil ways, they might die in their sin, but it's not your fault. However, if you stop your preaching, if you stop raising the issues, then the Lord's going to hold you accountable. That's pretty heavy stuff. Because in our society, there seems to be a kind of a mind your own business mentality. <laughs> you know, don't look for trouble. <laughs> But, you know, when that happens, we kind of do condone things that should not be condoned. And uh, it's important. It's important to realize that when you're talking about condemning evil, you're not condemning the person. You're trying to redeem the person. You're trying to love that person. You're trying to get them to change their evil ways because you know in your heart if they continue down that path, it's not going to be life-giving for them. But too many of us, I think, choose not to get involved. I don't know if you get the evangelist, but I got my copy yesterday in the mail, and there's a whole little page inside by the editor talking about the reactions that they got when they did a um, address the issue of Black Lives Matter or other people who are concerned, you know, they see something on their live stream Sunday Mass <laughs> they don't agree with and they uh, criticize and say they're going to stay away from that. Not going to go back to that church. That priest is too involved with politics. <laughs> Lo and behold, <laughs> we're all involved with politics whether they want to admit it or not. But that kind of stuff, I, I was surprised that they uh, were that honest in the evangelist to put that issue out there. Because uh, it is easier just to keep your mouth shut and to look the other way. But that's not what's going to help bring about change. John Paul II of happy memory, back in around late 1980s, 90s, he uh, was very concerned about 
individual repentance and reconciliation, emphasizing going to confession on a regular basis and talking about personal responsibility. And uh, some people said he, you know, he, he wasn't really focusing on social sin. But uh, I was reading an article in Commonweal yesterday and they point out that if you use the, the, the uh, reflections of John Paul II, even he says that we're all responsible for the quality of life of our communities. And I think that's something that we tend not to look take seriously. You know? Matthew's gospel gives the incident of, of uh, I guess you'd have to say, dealing with conflicts within the church. It says, if your brother sins against you, take the initiative to go and get it straightened out. And try to uh, put your point of view across and see if you can win him over. And he says, if he listens, then you won him over. Not get somebody else to go with you. Try again. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, if it's a conflict in the community, then you have to bring it to the, the community, the church. And uh, if he doesn't even pay attention to that, he's kind of cut himself off from the community. He says, you treat him like a tax collector or a pagan. Now that doesn't seem to fit in with Jesus. Treat him like a tax collector or a pagan. And maybe the instant way of understanding it better is you go back on the other page, the previous page in the Bible, and talk about the lost sheep. If someone is lost, Jesus says, go after them. You know? Go after the tax collector. <laughs> go after the pagan. And help pray to give them a sense of you care about them. And you want them to change because you know in your heart that will lead to life. And yet, so often we choose not to do that. So, I think uh, the lesson is pretty blatant, but it's hard to integrate in our own personal lives. But each of us is responsible, not only for our own well-being and trying to live the message of the Lord, but we're responsible to each other. And that's what makes us Catholic. We have to have a sense of the common good. The rugged individualism of our country is, uh, militates against taking responsibility. And yet, the Lord makes it pretty clear. Our two or three are gathered in my name, as we are here tonight. The Lord's trying to get us to get off our duff <laughs> and take our faith seriously enough to uh, be honest. Not to condone things, not to... Look the other way. Not to be holier than thou. We have enough of those people already. <laughs> but to be honest. And again, the motivation is not to condemn, but to invite. To uh, be reconcilers. To uh, encourage people to get on board. We want to have eternal life. It starts right here. And we all have to be responsible for the quality of life in our communities. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, <clears throat> was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. After by God's Spirit, we place our intentions now before the altar.
for the religious leaders and the faithful around the world, that they may exemplify the neighborly behavior by advocating that refugees be treated with respect and dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our state and nation, that they conscientiously undertake the reform of institutions that perpetuate racism, sexism, global warming, and police brutality. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who have committed acts of violence, abuse, or neglect, and for those injured by them, that all may find a path to justice that brings true healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, peaceful protesters who are working for justice, that they may be successful in softening the hearts, the hardened hearts, and raising the conscientiousness of our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For continued building of the relationship of prayer and support with our sister parish in Darien, Panama, that we may find new ways to help each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all workers, especially those who labor in the service of others, that they may fulfill their responsibilities in safety and receive just compensation. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For Reverend Michael Fufford and Maxine Larimer, and all those who have gone before us, that they may rest in the presence of our loving God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our book of intentions and those we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you challenge us to speak your word with loving compassion towards all, not to refrain from speaking the truth, but being each in our own way, an instrument of healing in our communities. Guide us with your wisdom that we might uh, use those opportunities well to give glory to you and to allow your presence to be more manifested in us. Make our prayer through Christ our Lord. If you haven't already done so, I invite you now to bring your offering forward to one of the baskets food pantry uh, furthest back, regular offering, and then we continue to collect for the recovery of Beirut for this week and next week.
Pray, sisters, brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Lord God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, you may be faithfully united in mind and in heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You laid the foundations of the world. You've arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world and all its wonders to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew that they may become for us, the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. So do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks. You've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, all who minister. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, 
the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your we offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, he who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant that your faithful, O Lord, <clears throat> whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may share eternal life in his name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Oh, I guess not. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Ho hopefully the Lord is with us anyway. <laughs> uh, faith formation registration is underway. Three learning models are available, um, in-class model, online, and parent-led. So registration materials have been sent to families that had previously been part of our program, but uh, registration materials and a calendar are available at both entryways. I should point in the direction of the exit door. Monday evening scripture reflection on Zoom will not take place this week because of the Labor Day holiday, but will resume the week after. Young adults, that is people in their 20s and 30s, are planning an apple picking event for September 26th. Details are in the bulletin and on Facebook. You are gracious, very generously giving to our food pantry. 397 households were served this month that came out to 1,413 individuals. Also rides food delivered to people's homes included 162 households. A new endeavor that we are beginning is partnering with United Tenants to help with a rent relief program. Many people have had the payment of their rent deferred because of COVID, but eventually there's going to come a day when that is going to have to be paid. And so we're preparing to assist with that. Just a reminder to leave your worship aid on your chairs and we look for volunteers at the end of mass to wipe down all the occupied chairs, which we'll know because you've left your worship aid on them. And the um, Madison Avenue is our exit door. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries or other significant events we should acknowledge? Have a blessed week and a safe Labor Day holiday. Once again, the Lord be with you. And, <clears throat> and may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks. Good job. Have a